So when it comes to engineering and computational methods, there is always a problem of computing integrals. And it's not because we can't solve the integral, we definitely can, especially analytically, most of the time. But the issue is, is when we try to compute it with uh, computers, is that it takes some time. And if we have systems of equations that deal with integrals, that has like 10,000 elements that you have to compute, that takes a significant amount of time. So the goal is to decrease that computational time, and one way of doing it is by using the one-point Gaussian quadrature. So our goal is to solve this integral. It is a one-dimensional integral, it's a scalar quantity, and our goal is to solve the integral by approximating it. So one way to do that is to just say that this integral is approximately equal to some sort of weight or coefficient times the function at a given point x1. So this is essentially the value of the integral given these different parameters. So x is defined in this interval, and our goal is to find this function of f. Now, as many approximations start with, we could assume that the function f of x is just some linear function. So what that means is just a for first order function with respect to x. So we could say that it has some initial uh, condition plus a coefficient times x. So this is just your basic uh, linear equation. So all we have to do to find these coefficients is to actually compute this integral. Uh, so what we have here is this. And this is pretty simple to solve. So once you do all this computation, what it simplifies to is this. So this is what we get when we just simplify it. So we have the terms alpha 1 and alpha 2 at the beginning of these uh, terms. So all we have to do is find c1 and x1. So if we could define, so we define c1 of f of x1 as this. And if we equate this to the purple equation, we can see that the coefficient of alpha 1 is c1 here, and it's b minus a here, and then the coefficient of alpha 2 is x1 and c1, which is just this value right here. So just by looking at the equation itself, we could define uh, c1 and c1 times x1. So we're pretty close to find the approximate solution. We said the approximate solution is c1 times f of x1. So all we have to do is isolate, isolate x1 and plug it back into the equation of f. So what we have to do is solve for x1 in this equation over here. So we could say that x1 is simply b squared minus a squared over 2c1. And we said c1 is b minus a. And if you remember that this is a difference of two squares, we can actually factor this and simplify this equation for x1. So we could say that b squared minus uh, a squared is just simply uh, b minus a times b plus a divided by 2 times b minus a. And then we could finally define x1, which is simply b plus a divided by 2. Now that we have that, we can properly define the approximation to this indefinite integral, or this definite integral. So we could say that from a to b of f of x, any function of x, you can approximate the solution by determining um, the weighting factor c1 and the point in between the interval of a and b. So what I'm saying is that the approximate solution is simply uh, b minus a. This is just the weighting of the approximation, the weight. So then we could plug the x1 value into this equation, so this will be b plus a divided by 2. So this is your one-point Gaussian quadrature. This will give you the approximate solution to the function of x being integrated over the domain a, uh, a comma b. So this is just going to be an example. Uh, let's find the approximate solution to x squared dx and compare it to the analytical result. So the first thing I'm going to do is solve for the analytical result. That should be pretty straightforward. So the analytical result or the exact solution to this uh, definite integral is simply one third. So now we're going to solve it by using the approximation by using the one point Gaussian quadrature. So to plug into our equation, we have to define our bounds. So our, uh, our definite integral that we're trying to solve has the bounds of a, which is going to be 0, and b is going to equal 1. Our function of f, or x, 
is simply x squared. So it's just whatever's in this integrand. So what we can say is that the integral is approximately equal to this. So the approximation simplifies to 1 fourth. And we could see that one third is approximately one fourth. If you need numbers, this is roughly 0 0.6 uh, repeating, which is approximately equal to 0 0.25. Uh, now you might actually say like, that's a huge amount of error. That is correct. That is uh, fairly large, uh, but we're not gonna be using this uh, by hand. And that's simply because usually the equations that require the Gaussian uh, uh, one point quadrature are equations that are very uh, tedious and complicated to solve. In a few minutes we'll see how this computational error actually decreases with the domain size. So our goal of this uh, script in MATLAB is to compare the computational time of calculating the integral analytically or exactly to the one-point Gaussian quadrature. So I'm going to say that we're solving this equation. It's some quadratic equation. So, so I'm going to define it as well as its uh, domain, which is this uh, right here, which is d comma e. Oh, and by the way, if you want this code, uh, there'll be a link in the description for you to download it so you don't have to uh, write this code from this video. So once we have this defined, we're going to calculate uh, the exact solution as well as the approximate solution. So the goal of how to demonstrate that is to compute a lot of integrals. So what I'm going to do is calculate the integral of this equation, um, of this quadratic equation, by fixing the, the lower bound, d, and incrementing the upper bound, e, by some sort of step size. So for example, calculate the integral from 0 to 0 0.1, and then the next calculation will increment that step size by 0 0.1. So the next integral will be 0 to 0 0.2. The third integral will be from 0 to 0 0.3. So to do that, I'm going to prepare a lot of variables. Um, not really a lot, but just a few so we could show the results later on in the script. So we're going to define a step size. I set it to 0 0.1. The step size you choose will affect the computational time tremendously, so keep that in mind. Uh, you probably want to choose something uh, in this magnitude so that when you debug it, if you are writing this code yourself, it'll be easier to, um, to do since you don't have to wait as long. So the step size is going to be 0 0.1, and we're going to define the number of steps. I mean, we're defining all the steps, so this just increments uh, the domain by 0 0.1. And then we're going to prepare this array, or this vector, which will contain all the so exact solutions that we're going to compute. Right now we're just going to, for proper coding etiquette, at least in MATLAB, is to prepare an array by setting up a zeros function, I guess. So we're going to say that's going to equal steps, and that's going to be a, uh, an n by 1 vector. Now when we compute this, we're actually going to be incrementing by 1 within every loop. So therefore, we won't have as many solutions as there, as there is steps. We'll have one less due to that uh, domain. So from A to B to B to C to C to D, we're incrementing each by that um, last node. But at the very end, we're not going to have uh, an additional node for that last node. Hopefully that's way too confusing, but you, you'll see what I mean. So we're going to do the exact same thing for the approximate solutions. Um, so once we have that defined, first thing we're going to do is compute the exact solution. So this is just going to be a for loop. Um, as I said earlier, we're going to calculate several integrals depending on what step size you choose and what your domain is. And all we're si simply going to do is use MATLAB's uh, predefined functions. Uh, I think it's called symbol something, uh, some sort of library that uh, transforms the uh, code into more of a symbolic form so far it could solve this exactly. So what we're going to do is uh, calculate it, each exact solution and then push it into the vector that we created up here. So that's what we're going to do. Oh, and then I forgot to define my iterator, which is i, so there we go, that's that issue. And then we're going to solve for uh, the integral, which is this function right here. So it's int, the function f, which we, we already defined above, 
and then our variable, which is going to be x, which is again defined in our function above. And then the first or the third argument would be your first boundary of your integral. In this case, we're going to keep that constant based on what we defined above. So that's going to be zero. That's because that's our boundary from zero to two, how I defined it right here based off, the, off these parameters. So, and then what we're going to do is increment the, the last boundary um, by the step size. So we're going to say steps and then i plus one. So just to give you an example of what's going on, so it's going to loop through the number of steps based on the step size that we defined. So it's going to calculate the integral from zero, our first boundary that we defined earlier, to that first step size. So the first one would go from zero to 0 0.1, the next one would go from zero to 0 0.2, the third one zero to 0 0.3, and so forth, all the way to our upper bound of which we defined as two. So then we compute the exact solution and then we push it to this empty uh, array. Well, not really empty array because it's filled with zeros, but you get what I'm saying. And then what we're going to do to calculate the time, we're going to simply just write tick, which basically uh, it's a MATLAB uh, function or call. I don't know what to, what to call it, but uh, it basically starts a timer and you could end the timer by saying talk. Now we want to store this uh, value so we could uh, later show it. So it's going to be something called solutions time. And we're going to set it equal to talk. So it basically after it, done, it is done calculating this uh, for loop in the script, it will store the time it took to do that. And then I'm going to repeat the process for the approximate solution using the one point Gaussian quadrature equation that we derived earlier. So I'm going to use the same for loop again and we're going to do the exact same process as before. So we're going to push those solutions, those approximate solutions into that empty array so to speak. And then all I'm going to do is write the Gaussian quadrature equation based on how this for loop increments. So what we have is a vector that contains the exact solutions and the approximate solutions. So what I want to do is analyze how much error there is for each uh, increment that we calculated for. So all we have to do is simply define that as errors. So that's going to be an absolute value because technically the the value of the integral can be positive or negative. So we're just going to take the absolute value of that and then just take the difference between the exact solution and the approximate solution. Okay, so once we have all that, we have the exact solutions and the approximate solutions and the errors. What I want to do is better visualize that, so I'm just going to plot the results. I'm not going to go through the details of that because that's really not the point of this video. So this is just a nice way to plot the data and to display some information in the console. So I'm going to run um, uh, the script now and hopefully you could see what I mean. So the main point to take away from this video is what is in this command window. So it says it took 2.7016 seconds to calculate 20 definite integrals analytically or exactly. So this is like your by hand solution. And now it actually took 0 0.0027 or roughly 2.7 uh, milliseconds to calculate the same 20 definite integrals using the one point Gaussian quadrature. So in essence, to take away from this video is that the quadrature is very, very good at calculating integrals quickly. Naturally, it comes to asking whether that uh, approximation is a good approximation. How do we know that we're getting a solution that is fairly accurate? accurate. So to visualize that, I graphed our solutions. So essentially what's going on is that we have on the x-axis the domain size of our integrand. So this is uh, the domain that you're integrating on, so from A to B, so to speak. And so it's actually the length of that interval. So for example, if we look at 1.4, the difference between A and B is the length of the interval, which is 1.4, and it gives us an exact solution and approximate solution. So the blue line is the exact solution, the red line is the approximate solution, and we can see how close they are based on this visual representation. And then the yellow line tells us how much error there is, which is the difference between these two lines. So one thing to point out is that the error increases 
rather significantly, depending on what kind of application you're using this for, when the domain or the, the domain that you're trying to integrate on increases significantly. However, as you decrease that interval, the approximation is actually really good. As you can see, there's practically zero error from zero to 0 0.2. So if you had an interval or an element size that was within the range of, you know, a magnitude of 10 to the minus one or even less, you have practically an exact solution. And that is more than sufficient for doing some engineering analysis or um, simulation. So hopefully uh, I explained this well. I know the code could be a little hairy when I was explaining it about the step size and so forth. But uh, if you want the code and feel, want to mess around with it for any reason, I'll leave a link down below for you to download it. With that being said, I'll, I'll see you next time.